This is a story of an unlikely survivor. A survivor who avoided the British Railway's cull on all steam engines. Only being saved as one gentleman wanted to own his own steam engine. A man after my own heart. This is a London and North Eastern Railway J52 type locomotive. And although small, has a special claim to fame. This was the first steam engine to be ever preserved by a private individual. It was preserved by Captain Bill Smith. Now the North Eastern Railway aren't really known for their small shunting locomotives and light trip working engines, as they were busy competing with the London and Midland and Scottish Railways for the world speed record and to provide the fastest service to Scotland possible from London, which one of their locomotives, Mallard, did in 1938, achieving a remarkable 126 miles an hour, or 203 kilometers per hour. And trust me, I've been London, so I can see why you'd like to leave there with a great deal of haste. But I digress. This locomotive was designed by Henry Ivor and was built in 1899 by Sharp Stewart and Company for the Great Northern Railway, and then lately, the London and North Eastern Railway. It is 31 foot, and three and a quarter inches long and eight foot and seven inches wide weighing a total of 51 tons with four foot eight inch wheels this small locomotive was designed primarily for shunting and light trip working never really going any distance particularly quickly being ordered for the great northern railway in 1899 and numbered 1247 she was deployed to Doncaster and in 1923, after the grouping of the railways, the newly formed London and North Eastern Railway acquired her and renumbered her to 4247. And then they thought, nah, let's renumber it again in 1942. But after that, the government took control of the railways in 1948 and renumbered her again to 68846. Christ, it's just a bloody number. Just pick one and stick to it. It's not that hard, you know. Three. She remained at Doncaster until 1950, where she was moved to New England, and then in 1956, she moved to Hornsey. Then, in the February 1959, the writing was on the wall for steam. This plucky loco avoided the cutter's torch as she moved again to the famous King's Cross Shed, where she became the Shed Pilot. A Shed Pilot was just an engine used to move other engines around and get them in the correct order for the next day. She was Shed mates to some of the world's most famous locomotives, just to name two, Mallard and Flying Scotsman. She was nicknamed by the staff as the Old Lady, quite fitting really, but this was short-lived as she was withdrawn from service in the May of that year, putting her future into question. This is where Captain William Smith comes into the picture. He'd always wanted to own an Ivert type loco, and when he heard about this one being withdrawn, he had to have it. Rumour is, is that he could afford a much larger engine, but this one was more manageable for him. Upon purchase, he had her repainted into her original guise of Great Northern Railway Green and had her original number of 1247 painted back on. He always referred to her as the Old Lady. From 1959, Old Lady was based at Marshmore Depot of Malwan, where Bill was the depot manager, running rail tours on the southern and eastern network until 1962 when British Railways banned all steam rail tours from the main line due to the modern image and steam trains being outdated. From 1965 to 1968, the engine resided at the Keighley and Worth Valley Railway in Yorkshire, and then she moved again to Tysley Motive Power Depot. She remained there until 1974. Then, in 1980, she moved to the North Yorkshire Moors Railway. As Captain Bill Smith grew older, he decided that he could no longer look after the old lady and decided to donate her to the National Railway Museum. Because of this, Captain Bill became the first honorary life member of the Friends of the National Railway Museum. In recognition of this, in 1993, a Class 33 type loco, number 33109, was named after the captain, with a plaque which tells the story of the old lady. This loco can still be seen thundering up the Irwell Valley, carrying the captain's name. So why is this story so significant? Well, without Captain Bill Smith proving that privately preserving an engine was possible, other railway preservationists probably wouldn't have got involved and many steam engines wouldn't have been preserved, such as Flying Scotsman, to name an example. As for the old lady, although there is no steam in her boiler, she still takes pride and place inside the National Railway Museum of York. <laughs>